the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for June 29th. So we're back to no storms active on this day, day 181 of the year so far. We've seen 31 storms so far in 2020 and nothing much on the radar right now. Let's go through it then. The Atlantic, there's that 10% chance still there, an area of interest. It's now been tagged Invest 96L. Don't fancy its chances over the next few days. National Hurricane Centre have it at 20% in another area off the US East Coast. In the East Pacific, day 46, we've got three areas marked there and the remnants of Boris further towards the west. Boris has died off and is, uh, looks interesting, but there's nothing left of it in terms of a tropical cyclone. No storms active in the Western Pacific. It remains quiet here. One or two small signs of development on the way, but nothing really. And in the uh, Indian Ocean, things looking very quiet here. Those two areas of interest in the South Indian Ocean We've uh, taken them off the charts now, the chances are diminishing. The Atlantic looks like this right now, so the 10% uh, chance coming from the eastern side of the Atlantic over there, that little area of interest which uh, is better seen during the day than at night as you can see the uh, imagery change there, not much to it in all honesty, a little bit of rotation, that's about it. The uh, Gulf of Mexico region looking fairly quiet, sometimes the storms blowing up over Cuba and the Yucatan. The East Pacific, you can see on the right hand side of the image there, um, a potent uh, disturbance which could become a brief tropical cyclone. Depression probably may be at a stretch a tropical storm briefly, but it wouldn't amount to very much, just like Boris, whose remnants you can see there near the center of the image, center left, um, as it approaches Hawaii. The Western Pacific looking fairly quiet. Again, you can see that monsoonal pattern in the South China Sea. There were rumblings on the models a few days ago that could have become a very brief tropical cyclone in the South China Sea, but uh, we don't have any chances on that. It looks as if that's going to be very unlikely. There could be an outside chance of an out at sea disturbance near the international dateline in the next few days. The South Pacific, just a line of small thunderstorms really extending from Papua New Guinea all the way down to um, Vanuatu really and the Indian Ocean there looking rather quiet as well. At the bottom there you can see those little disturbances but they've really come apart in the last uh, 24 to 48 hours. The India area, uh, a few thunderstorms and rain showers over the western parts. Sea surface temperatures gone off the boil just a little bit in the eastern Pacific down to about 29 to 30 degrees Celsius rather than 30 plus. Uh, the Atlantic that's warming up especially off the coast of Florida and over the Bahamas uh, some 30 degree pockets there now. The Indian Ocean cooling off a little bit as again in the western part of the Arabian Sea but warming up in the Bay of Bengal. Um, in the South China Sea, also warming up there as well, 31 degrees off the east of the western coast of the Philippines. Temperatures still struggling a little bit to get up there in the eastern side, um, but still average to above average across most of the western Pacific. You can still see the La Nina effect creeping in there across the eastern Pacific, but the tropical zone there is above average, as is much of the Atlantic Ocean. Well, in a different era, the Eastern Pacific was off to a flying start on June 29th, 1985. Dolores had formed as a Category 2, would peak later as a Category 3 in the centre of the image. Enrique was the weak storm on the left-hand side, didn't amount to much in the end. And Typhoon Irma was a Category 2. There's always an Irma uh, headed for the Japanese islands um, and was reaching peak intensity on this day in 1985. Back to 2020 then, and the next name on the Atlantic naming list, if you're just uh, getting to grips with the naming list, it's a good time to start. Edward is next up, followed by Faye. In the Eastern Pacific, Christina is next on the list, and in the Central Pacific, it's Hone. If I'm not mistaken, last time the Atlantic names were used in 2014, I think we only got to Edward in September. In the West Pacific, Sinlaku is next on the naming list, and in the North Indian Ocean, the next name on list one, the brand new list one, is Gatti. 
In the Southern Hemisphere, it's Imogen in the Australian region, followed by Joshua. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, just two days left for Kundai to form. And in the South Pacific, it's Yolanda. That's all for now. We'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an Ultimate Fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.